what you need to know about the XZ backdoor, new releases from Bun and Babylon JS, GitHub Copilot CLI goes GA, and a new Beyonce album. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. It has been a minute since we've had a show. Spring is here. There's a new Beyonce album. More on that later. And there's tons and tons of news to cover. Uh, and my shirt this week is for the band Boy Genius, and they might be on hiatus, but they are forever in my heart. All right, first, let's talk about a few GitHub updates. So the first thing I want to mention is that the GitHub Copilot CLI is now generally available. Yay! So this means you can now use GitHub Copilot in your terminal, and it's available for all users, uh, business, uh, enterprise, and individuals. My favorite use case for the Copilot CLI is to use it to do stuff in FFmpeg without having to read the manual and try and fail a bunch of times. It's very convenient. Also speaking of GitHub Copilot, my girl Kadesha Kerr wrote a great blog post on the GitHub blog, offering some really comprehensive tips and tricks for getting the most out of the GitHub Copilot uh, in your IDE. And so I've got a link to that in the show notes in the description down below, as well as more info on the GitHub Copilot CLI. And some other news, we've announced that code scanning autofix powered by GitHub Copilot and CodeQL is now in public beta for GitHub Advanced Security customers. And so how the code scanning autofix works is that it covers more than 90% of alert types in JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, and Python. And basically it'll deliver a code suggestion shown uh, to basically help you fix more than two thirds of, of bugs uh, or found vulnerabilities with little or no editing. So the idea is basically that your code gets scanned. If a vulnerability is found in a supported language, you're gonna get an alert and fix suggestions that are um, explained in natural language, uh, what, they, what the fix is. And then you can preview the code suggestion. You can choose to edit, accept, or dismiss it. And then you can uh, commit those changes to your file. It can even go into multiple files and, and dependencies of your project, and you're done. Um, there are more details in the blog post linked down below as well as in our code documentation, so be sure to check that out. But this is something that I, I hope will lead to less vulnerabilities in the code that we all write. Speaking of security, this is my weird segue into talking about the XZ backdoor. Okay. So this is a big deal. Uh, the XZ compression library is incredibly common and prolific across Linux and Unix-like systems. It's used by most Linux distros, and it's even a dependency for OpenSSH. Well, a few days ago, as I'm recording this, uh, Andres Freund, a Microsoft engineer and an all-around Linux geek who works on Postgres, noticed some performance issues that he was able to track down to SSH on his Debian Unstable build. And after some digging, he realized that there was something in the latest version of XZ that was causing the issue. And then further investigation revealed that it was actually a backdoor that if triggered could allow for remote code execution by an unauthenticated user. So this is where it gets bad. The person who put the backdoor in XZ was someone who had been contributing code to the project for a couple of years and had actually been made a co-maintainer of the project. And so this is a person who didn't have a history of submitting bad code and who went out of their way to make the, the, the code hard to spot. And Andre only found uh, this out basically by happenstance. Now the code was only around for a couple of weeks, um, but it had already been added to the unstable or rolling branches of a few Linux distributions. So if you're running uh, Debian Unstable, uh, certain versions of Fedora or SUSE Tumbleweed, you're gonna wanna update your system immediately. And, and as Andre said himself, we got so lucky that a confluence of events happened that allowed this to be spotted as quickly as it was. And I've got tons of links down below that highlight the timeline about how all this happened, uh, from what we can tell so far, a, a look at the backdoor itself, and some discussions that are taking place about what we can learn from this. But the big takeaway, and, and this comes about a decade after one of the first big crisis of uh, conscience moments in the open source community, which was Heartbleed, and that was a very different type of vulnerability, is that we need to find a way to offer more support to the maintainers who are responsible for some of our most trusted libraries, often with little help or compensation. The original maintainer of XZ didn't commit the code um, and put the backdoor in, and there was nothing obvious that should have set off alarm bells about the person who he made a co-maintainer. But for a library like XZ Utils to be maintained by a single person who had already expressed um, the fact that he was facing burnout and, and feeling unsupported, 
that's not okay. And, and we've got to do better as a community and as an ecosystem to support maintainers. As I've said, I've got a lot of resources linked down below, um, but I'm sure we're going to be talking about this in the weeks and months to come. All right, let's talk about some new releases. First up, bun.1.1 .bun .1 has been released. So we've talked about bun before. Um, basically, uh, how its team describes itself is as a fast all-in-one toolkit for running, building, testing, and debugging JavaScript or TypeScript from a single script to a full stack application. Uh, that, that's what it says, and that's actually what it does. It's pretty great. And uh, the new release adds a bunch of new features. The biggest one is that Windows support is finally here. This was actually previewed back with BUN 1.0, but BUN 1.1 adds support for Windows 10 and later, which is awesome. Uh, another feature in this release is the BUN shell, which was actually announced a couple of months ago, but it's basically a cross-platform shell that is similar to Bash, but it also works on Windows. And um, there are lots of other improvements and features too. So you can check out the BUN website and their GitHub repo for more info. And I've got all that linked down below. And in other new release news, Babylon JS 7.0 has been released. And Babylon JS is an open web rendering engine that's used for creating 3D games and experiences in the browser. It is awesome. And Babylon JS 7 is the culmination of tons of hard work from the last year. And it includes a bunch of new features, including procedural geometry, which the team is calling node geometry. And it also includes support for basic global illumination. Um, this has been a much requested feature that will let Babylon JS scenes render even more lifelike um, scenes. And, and uh, there's also stuff like the uh, uh, Gaussian splat rendering. There's full web XR support and support for the Apple Vision Pro. So um, in the links in the description, I've got a link to the Babylon JS highlights video, their announcement blog, and of course, the project page on GitHub. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay. well. I spoil this at the beginning, but yes, a new Beyonce album came out last week. It's called Cowboy Carter, and you should definitely listen to it. Uh, there's a bunch of discourse about Beyonce's cover of Dolly Parton's Jolene and how she changed the meaning of the song. I don't really care about any of that. I care about good music and this album's great. Anyway, let me know your favorite Beyonce track uh, on this album or otherwise any Destiny's Child fans up there out there, let me know. But you can also let me know your thoughts on any of the other stories that we covered this week in the comments down below. And uh, that's gonna do it for me. If you like this episode, please leave a like, it helps the algorithm and uh, go ahead and subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.